so uh, to, to say actually, I have an interdisciplinary uh, practice of art and design. It's a bit of a hybrid. So this piece in particular is a grandfather clock, which is life size as a grandfather clock would be. So it's 80 inches tall by I think it, uh, 18 inches wide. And it's one of the design pieces that I created, and it's uh, so it's pretty sexy. So it's it's um, powder coated white um, uh, made out of uh, aluminum cut. So it's a silhouette of the grandfather clock, uh, ideally. Did I say it was white? Okay, so uh, this piece in particular was uh, exhibited at uh, the power plant, uh, and they are uh, mirrored gold frames. Uh, kind of, uh, it's made out of um, uh, kind of like a faux gold uh, brass, uh, and I sort of displayed them in a domestic sort of situation. Uh, and so here's a close up of them, so you can see kind of how thin they are. Uh, and this is actually is, uh, a project that crosses over between the art and design as well. The clock itself actually sells more design-based object, but uh, when I cross over, it's, they, they usually mean that it's a smaller edition of the objects themselves as well. Whereas normally with the design-based thing, you might do an unlimited run. Um, so this project uh, is called um, Five Piece Lanette Set and Chandelier, and it is uh, silhouettes of uh, IKEA-based objects and IKEA standard sizes in uh, cardboard uh, boxes, sort of set up as uh, Barbie boxes that you would get. Um, and they, uh, they're they quite large, uh, life size as they say, so the whole piece itself is about, um, I guess, uh, eight feet tall by about six feet wide. And so they lay against each other, sort of waiting to be purchased, sort of in limbo. Uh, and again, cardboard, uh, and then it has um, that clear polymer that you would put, that you see in uh, the Barbie boxes, or um, I guess uh, various toys that you would sort of see like that, yeah? This one is just uh, one of, though, uh, of our project. We'll move to the next one. Okay, so this one is uh, an organic car. This is a drawing that I did. And so what I did is I took, um, which arguably the first uh, compact car made in North America, which is called the Rambler Rebel in the 50s. Uh, and so I, I did this little uh, mock-up of it out of origami. Uh, and then I used that and then folded it, uh, flattened it. And so this was where the red uh, on the car was. And then I metal braked it, which just means you form metal into another shape, uh, kind of like origami. And it's made out of uh, aluminum that you often used for um, fixing your car superficially when, it, uh, when you crash into something. This image is cut off for some reason, but it is um, the animal farm. We all know the book. Uh, and so what I did is I took the cover and took all the animals uh, from that, the chickens, the cow, uh, the pig, and the barn. And then uh, same origami. I, it's a side view, so you can see how thin it is. Uh, and created it and metal bricked it again. With, um, and then painted it with enamel and uh, uh, adhesive vinyl uh, applied on top for the texture. And then it displayed it as the book would have been, the book cover would have been uh, created. Okay, this one is uh, the number three of the 10 most expensive paintings ever sold. It's an ongoing project. This is 54 by 54 uh, inches. And it's the shadow of uh, the painting number three painting that's been ever sold. So the, the project itself is consists of uh, well, the ten paintings uh, and the shadows of each painting. So uh, this is the detail of it. So uh, number three sort of has the uh, different colors of the shadows that would be in the painting, which we have the silver leaf, gold leaf, and uh, or black green, as you can see. It's the painting itself. Gustav, sorry, I didn't say that initially. So I have a process, a computer program that picks out the main five to seven colors uh, of the painting. And then I create the shadows with that accordingly. And of course, because I kind of take it on my own um, to what I want it to look like. This piece showed at MoCA two summers ago. So uh, mine's uh, the roller coaster. It's called the Russian Mountain. And it's um, structured after 
the first roller coaster ever made, which was in the 17th century uh, in Russia. And they basically slid down on uh, a skid of ice closer. So it's sort of also modeled after uh, structures, scaffolding, various forms like that. It sort of has an architecture and design element. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the $100 back of basic plywood and uh, gold mirror front. Oh, there we go. It's an image you can see. Looks fun. 17th century. Not the mountain version, of course. Pretty fiction. Okay, so this project in particular, of uh, doing for uh, do design, it is uh, composed of. Uh, there'll be, oh, so there'll be. Uh, I talk fast on this one. Black and gold mirrors with little engravings of various lyrics, well, the, these lyrics from the song, Do What You Want. Uh, so, oh shit, that was that one. <laughs> so that'll be exhibiting, uh, so you'll see that on the weekend. And this one is a project, uh, You Look Great, Gold Mirror. Uh, and it is a project that'll also be exhibiting, but I've created this um, structure for it uh, that's sort of reminiscent of a billboard structure, and there you go. So that's the rendering of it, because of course I haven't finished building it yet. But you'll see it uh, next week, or this week, or the weekend. And uh, that'll be in the window display at Helena's on Dundas Street. And that's it.